Okay, we're looking at longbows and how to shoot a longbow and you're interested in trying to become efficient at shooting one. Absolutely, Jim. I'm here to uh, I'm here to unlearn all the bad habits I had from messing around in my garden and actually learn to do it properly. Okay. Well, what we have here, we've got an example of, of, of a couple of longbows. This particular one here was made by Keith Gaskine. Very, very good. It's actually a coach bow. It actually comes apart and you can pull it out, right. of, a, out of a section. But it's a little bit jammed at the moment, so we can't do that. But what you're looking for on, on a longbow is, on that particular one there, there, there has been a bit of a problem on that bow. And so wherever you're ever going to buy a bow, it's deflex slightly. Yeah. Okay? And that's going to cause a problem in shooting, particularly on the bottom limb. So when you're looking for a bow... You know, on this particular one, if you look at this one, mm. you put that one over there like that. That one is in much better condition. Yeah. See it? It's lying straight on it's it. It's lying straight across. So if you if you get a problem with that, that bow was, was perfect when we got it, but it was left standing. Mm. And with it has gone, it took a bow on the bottom limb, which is what okay. makes the bow completely useless now. So when you say standing, it was upright Up like, like that. that. You so what way should you house your bow? That way. Lying down? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Never leave your bow standing like that. Cause you all sorts of problems. Okay, and we've that's, discovered that's, mistake that's number one for me. Number, so that's the big debate. Now, what way do you... There's yeah, your, well, you have your answer there. There's mine standing up. There. There's your bow there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. it should be down here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're lucky. It, there's a slight deflex in that particular one. It, it wouldn't be... I wouldn't like it. You know what I mean? Right. The bow should be basically flat. Okay, let's swap these over. Yeah, have a look. Have the a bow look. should be totally flat. Now, you get the idea? Yeah. Really, there is on this particular yeah. one here, there's a major deflex on that. Okay, yeah, she's, she's yeah. running up a little bit too okay. much. Uh, again, that was probably the way it was stored. It was, yeah. wasn't, wasn't made like that. No. It was probably stored. No, but see, nevertheless, that's what you're going to have to look for. Now, that's one okay. of those you got to spitting in the soup and cause yeah. you know, lots of problems. But you're nine months too late with that advice, but <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know what I'm saying, but nevertheless, it's all about longbows and how to shoot longbows. Yeah. But it, it's it's just to shoot a longbow is it's it's pure archery. It's yeah. Absolutely fabulous. But the problem with it is a lot of people don't know how to shoot a longbow. Mm. The longbow is you have to learn how to draw the bow. You have to understand how to draw the bow. Now, the most efficient archer at shooting a longbow. was this gentleman, Horace Ford. Mm. He was an amazing character. He could shoot a long bow. And you can have a look at the dates when he shot these particular scores. Okay? Can you yeah. see that there, John? Yeah? Okay, all these scores. That particular score there, the 1251, he done a little one better than that. 1272, I think. Right. On a York round, which the York round was you shoot one way and then you shoot up the back way. And yes. the, the distance where you had <coughs> so many arrows at 100 yards, so many arrows at 80 yards, so many ar arrows at 60 yards. Okay? Right. And I'll give you the, 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 the numbers here. So you had on, on the York round, you had 72 arrows at 100 yards, 48 arrows at 80 yards and 24 arrow, arrows at 60 yards, okay? Now the basis of that mm. is modern day archery, is 36 arrows at 90 meters, 36 arrows at 70 meters, 36 arrows at 50, 36 at 30, 144, 144. Mm. So it's like for like, but just different It's arrows. like for like, yeah. and this is the basis of our modern day feet. Now, okay, we've changed a little bit now to, to what they got it uh, shooting off against one another and that type of stuff. But, mm. um, you know, that was the full feet at one stage. And that was the qualifying standard to get to the Olympics. Had to do a certain score, that, that, that and that. And with the result, you had 
an accumulation of they're trying to shoot 1300 or 1400 whatever mm. they're trying to do now but Horace he was a phenomenal 1854 to 1858 yeah. he was on top of his game obviously yeah he was no and then what result is no Kevlar no clickers no stabilizer yeah. no sights wooden arrows and a longbow and two way shooting yeah. now at that particular score there stood for 70 years <laughs> right 70 years that score stood for and it was only broken in 1924 by an American gentleman doctor wow. I can't think of his name but he broke that particular so it stood for 70 years so he was a phenomenal shooter now if you look at the way he's shooting he's shooting the system of under the chin yes yeah now his idea of that was that you have to have your eye running down the arrow. Mm. Your, whether your aiming eye had to be running down the arrow. And mm. that way then you become, you become um, more efficient at aiming your shot. Combined with that then, he, when he was in his training, he, he, six degree angle on his elbow right. from the front hand. That's the format now for top Olympic archers. Okay, so from here, this point here, yeah. to that yeah, point there, yeah. six degrees up. Six degrees, six degrees up. So, you, so if you look on the stance again, it's a very, very close stance. But again, mm. it's a, it's a straight-on stance. It's not, it's mm. the modern-day stance basically. So he was a, he was unbelievable. He was a, a you know, the, the world's greatest archer really at the right. end of the day. But he was a longbow shooter. Now you can't argue with his scores mm. and you can't have somebody saying I oh, know that's the wrong way to shoot come on and put up one of those scores mm. and then talk to me about it <laughs> that's it yeah you know is he wrong to do that you know it may not be what you got to the ideal type of shooting now normally what you get then is you have people who shoot I was lucky enough to go to America I was in America Bob Wesley and uh I became very, very, very friendly with him, and uh, I'll give you an idea. I, he wrote a little thing on the, the no, book for good. me, his best friend, one of his best, best friends. Best wishes to my friend, Jim Conroy, a great archer. A great archer. Very good. 1997. 1997, yeah. So, so the reason why I went over there was because I had made tree stands, and in 1997 I won best of the best archery product, or hunting right. product in America. For tree stands. For tree stands. And Jim Conley from over. Ireland. Very good. I <laughs> made that. Yeah. And I went over and I was in, went down to see him. And I had a, a great interest in, you know, um, Howard Hill. And they had a, he had a place in Wilson's, Wilsonville in, in, uh, in Alabama. And I got to go down and see all the guys. And I got to shoot with some of the, some of the top guys there. And we had uh, an interest in uh, Howard Hill. Eddie McCaffrey was right. a, an, actually an Irish guy mm. from New York, but a fantastic longbow shooter. Right. And you had the Charles Chapel, Steve Martin, and he's one of the Martins who uh, made the what you call the Martin, what you call the uh, top bows and all that type of right. stuff. So you've got, got and, uh, Good pedigree. Hugh Rich, all those guys. Got to meet all those those guys and have a, an interest in how they shot the, the, mm. the longbow. Well, their, their system was that they shot the longbow, but it wasn't a longbow as such. It, it was more like this one. It was a, yeah. an American flat, flat bow. Yeah. That's a flat bow. That's a longbow. That's, mm. that's a flat bow. There's a slight difference in that one. Yeah. So when you're shooting that particular one, you can hold a little bit longer on the shot. You can hold yeah. and you can aim in. With this one, you can't. Yeah, so the, the longbow, it's, it's because it's, it's not tension. It's 90% broke Okay. as you're pulling in. With this one, this won't happen with that. But with, it's a, a different technique in shooting that one than shooting an American flat bow. So if you were to hold a longbow, you, you could break, you or could at break. least you're weakening it. And, and you're weakening it, going to cause a problem. You've got ah, to, okay. you've got to, you've got where to you can find, hold that a little bit more. Where you're going to find it. So, so basically when... Um, Horace Ford was shooting that particular one, he'd take up the shot, he'd get his stance, hold the stance up into it. 
and he'd have a preordained position where he yeah. now he'd no sight, nothing like that. So he was he was basically looking at the the, the window of the bow here or the, the side of the bow there, and he'd be looking placing that on that particular yeah. point, or he'd have a, a what they call it a cheat system where he'd raise his hand up a certain amount that he would be able to get the trajectory for to shoot the the right. nine, the hundred yard shot or the eighty yard shot or the sixty yard shot. He knew exactly where. But he didn't have marks on the bow. It no, was, you it can't, was, he just knew the bow. The, you can't put marks on yeah. the bows against the rules. To put right. marks on the bows, but he would probably put a mark on the scratch. Yeah, he'd know it. He'd know he, the bow. He knew he'd his know bow. Yeah. He knew his bow. So lots of grain marks and a lot of things. grain marks yeah, and all that stuff. So he knew his bow, and he knew what his his elevation point would be like. Yeah. Now, here at the fore, like the bows were made, they were artillery bows, and mm. guys pulled them right back to their ear here, and they let go, and they landed in the middle of the enemy, mm. killing the enemy. This was a different ball game altogether. This was target shooting. Yeah. So you had to understand what you were doing. Again, he drew under the chin. Right. Most longbow shooters will yeah. shoot to the side of the face. Okay. Yeah. Now the problem with shooting from the side of the face, the arrow is always going to go to slightly to the right. So you always have to aim off. He never had to aim off because he was right underneath the arrow. Okay, coming under his chin. Oh, coming right under, under his, his chin. Under his chin. Yeah, okay. Different different technique yeah. and, and things like that. But we have we weren't alone. The ladies the ladies had a, what they got a good bit of what you call it there. Ladies had a, we had some very good, Queenie Newell, Newell, Irish lady. Right. She won the gold medal in the Olympics in 1904. Oh, she, right. she was from RD. From RD. We had a, an Olympic <laughs> gold yeah, but, medalist. But the English robbed her as usual. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> we won't go into the politics of uh, who belonged to who in 1904. 1904, you know. But yeah. uh, then you had uh, Cecilia uh, beat him. She was Irish as well. She was from Monkstown. She was 11 times national champion. And she was a British champion as well, an Irish girl. And w was it the preserve, interesting, with the, at 1904, was this the preserve of the semi-aristocracy? Well, it would have been the, what you got it. It would have been the higher... Yeah, yeah. Not, not quite They wouldn't be what nobles, you got it. They wouldn't be the well-to-do. The well-to-do, basically, yeah. the, the, the archery. And she was, again, they shot the... the the York round, but there's but the Hereford round they shot for the ladies and things like that. It was right. a little bit different because the bows are much lighter. Okay. Now, how are, are the different, you know, different shoot? This this gentleman, Horace, his bow wouldn't have been any more than 50 pounds in draw right. weight. Now, uh, how did he shoot, you know, a bow like that at 50 pounds when all the other long bow fellas are talking about the Mary Rose yeah, and they want yeah, 100 yeah. pounds and they want to, what you call it, muscles on their muscles, yes. you know, muscles on their breath. Yeah. <laughs> but what he did was he understood spine values. You see that there, John? This is a set of arrows, mm. wooden arrows, that you have to look at if you're going to, we say, shoot a long bow yeah. or a flat bow. So each one of those are measured. The static spine value is measured on each one of those. So with the result, spine value is that the the, the, the bending of the, the bending yeah, that's right. yeah. And that's so you can see on the yeah. designated number on that three twenty six. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one there. Three three zero. Yeah. Two different look. Looks Quite similar. Same. Yeah. A little bit there. longer, a little bit shorter. 330. 330. Yeah. So 330 would shoot in a particular level. And 336, he would adjust. Yes, okay. To suit that one. So we have another so one. This there. is like the caliber of a bullet. Except now you have it. So what have you got on that one? 332. 332. Very, very, very. Subtle difference. But subtle difference. So each, every time he shot an arrow. Yeah. He knew exactly where that, where to aim. So he shot his arrows in sequence. Yes. Okay. So he yeah. knew exactly where he was going to shoot. And the same thing with Cecilia, and the same thing with Queenie. They had a, a what they call a match set of arrows. They were yeah. set up on the, the draw check board, and they were set on the with a spine tester. But there's another one there. Three three two again. Three three two. So you, you can get it, but you, you'll never get them 100%. No. Well, you have 332, but th this one here... 336. 336, yeah. okay. 
all he had to do on that particular one was aim a little higher on that one. And like you can vis visibly see on this one, I don't know whether it's the the the, the uh, patina or is it the the grain. It, this is a little darker. A little than bit darker, too. and it, so it would that, have to be the density yeah, of the wood. Yeah, and so it would, it would, it would have, a, have a, you know a mind of its own. Yeah, and it would go in a particular way itself. But, but mm. you have to match those arrows off. That's what you have to do with longbows. Right. You have to match your arrows. So yeah. you just can't come along and just grab a bunch of arrows and say this is going to work. You have to. So there's mistake number two we've discovered because <laughs> that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. So you get the idea. So, okay. So that's it. So when you're buying arrows, you know you, you have to. You know, this is you know taking it to a, a, an extreme, mm. but nevertheless, if you want to be like Horace Ford. Mm. So if you're going to matches, you need to take the arrows, yeah, you've arrows gotta, seriously. Yeah, so you're going to know where every arrow is yeah. going to go. And as I say, like an old, a whole set of twelve on that, beautifully fletched. Yeah. All set out and things like that. And you have you know, this one there again. What have you got? 3320. What's the word? I can't see that one. I've got an app line. Uh, that one's 328. 328. Yeah, yeah, so lighter again. Yeah. So you get the idea? Yeah, absolutely. So that's what you have to do. Did you, where, where did you get these? Did you? These were done by uh, Christopher, a friend of mine. Right. He makes these up. You yeah. know, he does all sorts of art. He does different, different arts. But yeah. we would go into this longbow stuff a little bit more hmm. because mainly I'm dealing with guys on the continent yeah yeah um, with longbows I wouldn't be Irish guys people shoot longbows here but they don't shoot them very 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 well right. they have a tendency to what you call it whack the shot off and yeah you yeah. know there well there may be some good shots but if you look even on on the um, internet or you look on what you got at Instagram you see guys shooting uh, longbows and you know they you know leave, leaves a lot to be designed yeah the, 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 the arrows themselves are quite the work of art with the paint job that's on it yeah the, they're, know, be they're really beautiful yeah but as, you, as I say like you have the understanding of the so know, each, each one thing. of these that's packaged is is outlined on the is on, on the, the thing front. and you know exactly so you're going to shoot those you number mm. those off and yeah. you shoot them in sequence. Yes, yeah. So you number. So I know this little fella is going to go a little bit higher. You get to become your friends. So if you're going for your 90, you'll go for a certain spine. If yeah. you're going for your 70, yeah, you'll well, go for no, a certain you, spine. The way it works out on that one is th these arrows will be matched. So this, this would be for uh, particularly ladies. That would be 30 to 35 pounds. And okay. those arrows then would match. A 30 to 35 pound bow. bow. Yeah, yeah. So like if your bow was 80 pounds, yeah. you'd have to get a, a set of arrows with the spine value. Yeah. That's going to what you got to match. This is 55 on with this 55, flat bow, you, so you'd have, have to get a you have to get a set of arrows that's going to match the, the spine value. And, and and if you didn't, if so, if I took those arrows which are for a 30 35 uh, yeah. pound bow and use them with this 55, yeah. what what would you end up seeing? It'd be able to be too weak and they go all over the place. Just. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Yeah. Not, it, not enough weight in them. Yeah. To, if, to if they're take too, the power if, that's if, they're, if they if they have if they're too stiff, they go a certain way. If they're too light, they go another way. So you wouldn't right. get the, the get the shot in. And so then like sticking a Ferrari engine into a micro. Yeah, yeah you have it. <laughs> and that's exactly where the work where the arrows kind of work out. So that's the you know the looking yeah. at what you got to you know taking it to a scientific yes yeah. level. And shooting your ball, and that's. The, but a lot of people just want to go out and there, fling a few arrows. But Absolutely. if you want to become a good longbow shooter, you have to mm. do the business. Yeah. But otherwise, okay. otherwise, <laughs> you know, you're you're wasting your time. So if you take your arrows, you know, yeah, very nice. These are these are homemade by homemade. The, by the owner of the. It's, it, it, the the owner of the bow made these himself. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, like a, the weight on this here will be causing you problems. Okay. There's no weight on that one. Right. The glue is. It's a little bit chunky. It's a little, little bit little chunky. Bit, yeah. Well, give yeah. it. You know, I mean, he's an amateur. He's he's, yeah, he's doing he's, his he's, best. He's, yeah, but you but yeah. you can't be like that. No. You have to. But you got to take a different approach to it. So if we put that onto the spine testing machine there. Yeah. Later on, and we tested every one of those arrows, and. Um, John will tell you what would you find, John? You'd find a, a, a big variation in each one. Right, so you yeah. shot, you say you shot that one, and the spine was wrong on it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and then you shot that one. It wouldn't go in the same place. 
Right. So, so, so your your corrections is just impossible to get it right because there's too much inconsistency. Too in much the, inconsistency in your yeah, shooting yeah, and things yeah. like that. Okay. You know. Yeah. But that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I know. But does, <laughs> it, does that kind of put yeah. you off a little bit? No, no, no. I mean, it's 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 important to, because you can practice and practice all you want, but if if you're not uh, if you don't understand the tools you're using, yeah. you can be making yourself very tired. Yeah. And frustrated. Yeah, and you're trying to get something right that you'll never get. Right. Yeah, and you're wondering. Oh, I wonder why that. I thought I made that a very good shot. Yeah, it's yeah. not you. It's the arrow. Yeah. Okay. And that's 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 the difference in it and that you know. So yeah. like when you're coming in onto the shooting a longbow, there's a, a thing what they call pause. You have to pause on the shot. Yeah. So when you're coming up, and we go as as we do a little bit outside. I'll yeah. show you exactly what to do, what you have to do on that. When you come in b up onto the shot with a longbow, you, you've got to brace yourself well into it, and you've got nice. to move into the shot. And as you're shooting on the longbow, you take it up and you, you come in onto the draw. So you're coming down, so you pause slightly there. So what you do is you move the hand across to get the arrow under your eye. Okay. So that you're looking down the arrow, that you're not looking to the side of the arrow. Most of the guys I look on, on looking on the Instagram, looking, they're all looking down the side, so they're looking down the side of the arrow. Yeah. Okay. And all the time. Do you want to bring the arrow in? Yeah, your they eye? get they, they hit the target all right, but they never get groups. They don't get okay. groups. So the only way you're going to get a group is by having your eye down the length of the arrow, down the centre of the arrow. And that means tucking the... The, the, the anchor the, the in anchor very, very in, close. You know. And then you're looking down. So you move your head slightly that way. But the problem when you move your head slightly that way with the longbow, you're better off keeping your head up. But you can't do that if you're shooting onto the face. So you have to use a different technique in relation to shooting the shot. So that hand has to move across so that the... Hmm. you're looking down the centre of the arrow all yeah. the time when okay. you're shooting the centre of the arrow. So when you get up, the army of fellas come up, they pull the arrow, like they could be looking here, and what hmm. they're doing is they're pointing with the, with the bow hand, but the arrow is pointing over there, and then they make all sorts of adjustments. But if they got into a situation where they look down, the sensor there, and then mm. got their point of you know their reference point where they want to you know have the elevation of the arm, you know lower yeah. or higher. You know instinctive aiming. Mm. You know you have a much better chance of shooting with the eye behind the arrow rather yeah. than to the side of the arrow. Okay. So you got to kind of look at that, and then that depends on how you look at your shoulder, your front shoulder. The front shoulder again is extended. You can't move your shoulder up. Yeah. You can't move your shoulder down, you can't pull your shoulder this way. Mm. So you've got to come in onto the shot, straight in. And the elbow, again, like yeah. Horace Ford was saying, six degrees. six degrees above the centre of the hand. So whether you're shooting face or you're shooting under mm. your chin. So it depends on how you go. So we have a good background of longbow yeah. shooting, even from a history point of view. We have Cecilia, we had Queenie, yeah, and we had and Horace Ford. Sounds Irish to me, you now. Yeah, somewhere along the line. For <laughs> somewhere, sure. uh, somewhere along the line, he's a bit of an Irish. Yeah. But any, but anybody will say, you know, shooting a longbow, it's the nicest form of shooting, and if you can do it well, why not try to do it well? Yeah, yeah. And that's the way you look at it. Get all the parameters right. Get the string right. Do what you want to do yourself, and mm. you know, enjoy yourself, and you know, push yourself to the limit. But you can't do that if you have mismatch equipment. Yeah, okay. your bracing height is wrong. If the deflex is wrong on your bow, if you stored your bow in the wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> okay, don't go on about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was an expensive bow, and we ruined it for the same thing. Took my eye off the ball. You know, yeah, but that's what yeah. happens. You know, so that's that's how. You, oh, excuse me, that's how you shoot. Great. Yeah. Well, will we go outside. You can show me properly. We do out, and we do a little bit outside. <laughs>